I'm just gonna take a stroll through Hastings Street real quick, see if there's any homeless evictions going on. So yes, yeah, so there you go. Like, I called the cops. Actual crime happening. They don't even show. They don't even bother to show up. But yet, when those when they falsely called the police against me, they show up within three cops, possibly more. Show up within five minutes. Yeah, there's, I'm not sure what they're gonna build here. There used to be, there used to be some community service here, like a community center here, but they tore that down. I'm not sure if they're gonna replace it with housing or not, but. Another troll. They don't require identif identifying information. All they need is the address. Uh, but uh, but the police uh, the police report I made I told them that this person is uttering threats against me uttering like threats of violence against me I mean that should I mean that should be considered a pretty big deal right that should be something that gets a speedy response from the police but it does if somebody's threatening you with violence I mean it could easily escalate to a violent situation right so that's something they should be quick to respond to but I'm pretty sure they're intentionally not responding. They probably know it's me calling, even though that's why I didn't give them my name, right? That's one of the reasons I didn't give any identifying information, because if they knew it was me, I knew they wouldn't respond, right? So that's probably the reason. They probably know it's me that called. That's why they're not responding. So that's how hostile cops are about being held accountable, like some of the videos I make sometimes. Like, they wouldn't even respond. Like, if someone actually started assaulting me or something, like, they probably wouldn't even respond to that. Like, dereliction of duty. Uh, he was... The guy that threatened me, he's, he was staying in rooms. He's staying in room 8, I think, in that building. He went back inside the building. And another thing I've seen at this building is some of these like skeevy slumlords. They'll actually in, they're actually enter people's buildings when they're not home, and just like snoop around. I've heard people I've heard people reporting that some of their stuff is going missing, and they suspect they suspect that people have been coming into their rooms without their permission. So they have the keys, right? Like that guy that was threatening me. He's the mate. He's the so-called maintenance guy of that building. So he he's got keys to all of the rooms, right? And they got cameras inside that building. They can do. They can spy on residents. They can tell like when they leave. So people's rooms are being entered without their permission. Stuff might be getting stolen. Like there's a lot of shady stuff going on in some of these apartment buildings in the downtown east side. Changing, yeah, that is a Kara. Of course, that is a good idea, but. I'm not sure that's gonna work. They can actually, like, if somebody tries changing their locks, I think they could actually, like, file, uh, they could file a tenancy branch. They could file, like, a dispute resolution with the residential tenancy branch. That they wanna, you know, they want a copy of the key. If the locks are being changed, then they wanna be given a copy of the key. I'm headed towards, I'm gonna take a quick walk around East Hastings Street. Cause yeah. If you guys want to, like, check out Vandu. It's called V-A-N-D-U on Twitter. They've got some videos of the recent evictions being done, like, in the dead of winter against homeless people on Hastings Street. They filmed some of it. it... They're actually asking for volunteers right now. If somebody's able to, in the daytime, if somebody's able to go to Hastings Street and kind of keep an eye on the situation, like, film this stuff if it happens. A short big girl walking her dog. That's not very specific. <laughs> Is she in any type of danger or something?
Ginger, uh, what do you mean? Uh, uh, is she unhoused? Like, what's going on with her? Exactly, now is not the time to be doing these kind of evictions. And of course, in that video that Vandu put up, like they're talking, they, they kind of confronted, they peacefully confronted one of the cops, a sergeant, he's in some of my videos. Like they peacefully confronted him about that. They asked him, like, do you know that some of these people that you're evicting, they don't have anywhere to go? And the cop was trying to play dumb. He's like, oh, I don't know anything about that. And of course they know about that. Like a lot of these people, they've got, they don't have many options right now. I mean, they wouldn't be on the street, right? If they had housing options, affordable housing options, I mean, they wouldn't be. Most people don't choose to be on the street. I mean, they're on the street because there aren't any like affordable alternatives available. Uh, Sati. Tati Devi444, sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Okay, so apparently like Vandu, Vandu, V-A-N-D-U, it's one of the organizations, like adv advocacy organizations in the downtown east side. They do a lot of great work, kind of, like trying to advance the interest of homeless people, vulnerable people. And they recently put up a video on their Twitter of police and Vancouver city workers evicting homeless people off of Hastings Street and they do it they do interviews with a homeless woman you know as she's saying that they have nowhere to go they're not sure what they're supposed to do and she said that if they don't comply with the police they're probably gonna be falsely arrested and if they go to a different street then the same thing's gonna happen right they go to a different street this the whole cycle is gonna repeat itself probably again some person's gonna file complaints or something the police are gonna arrive city workers are gonna arrive they're gonna be asked to move again so they just keep getting instead of actually helping them instead of actually spending money to help them they spend so much money just trying to make life more difficult for homeless people it's pretty it's pretty messed up yeah why are some of you guys saying Why are you some of, guy, some of you guys saying restart the live? Thank you for the likes, appreciate it. Nicole, thank you so much for following. Anybody that wants to follow, will follow you back. Kayla, thank you for following, appreciate it. Yeah, Philip, that's the... That's the wrong mentality. That's not it at all. It's not that for a lot of a lot of people on the street. It's not. It's not because of choices they made, right? Some people try to. Some people try to put the blame on them. Try to make it like an issue of character, like they deserve to be homeless, right? But that's not. A lot of them have mental health issues. Mental health issues. I'm headed towards Hastings Street. Hey, okay, so as I'm walking through Hastings Street, I'm actually gonna kind of lower the phone a bit. Most people are awesome, but some people get hostile if they see you filming, even though it's public. That's not it at all either. Again, you're just, you're perpetuating stereo false stereotypes. You're buying into those false stereotypes. A lot of the on-house people are clean. I mean, like, I don't agree with that at all. Like, some people are trying to blame it on them, saying it's their own doing that they're homeless. But, okay, let's follow that thought. Hypothetically, let's say some of the, like, it is their fault, right? Like, we all make bad choices sometimes, right? So if you made a bad choice, if any one of us, if I made a bad choice, if you guys made a bad choice, 
like wouldn't you want help like should don't you deserve help to kind of get out of that situation kind of redeem yourself maybe make better choices kind of learn from your mistakes learn from that a lot of these people that's what they want right some of them that i mean some of them that got let's say addicted to substances that was a mistake right but that could have been out, out of trauma like if you're, if you're not in that situation like some of them they probably went through some kind of trauma and that's what led to them getting hooked on drugs like another misconception about people that are on substances is that you know they're just junkies like they just enjoy the drugs and all that but some of it it comes out of trauma right they're just trying to numb themselves they're trying to forget what happened so you gotta actually anybody that's trying to kind of criticize the homeless people just come down here and actually meet some of them right talk to them like don't criticize homeless people from afar right don't you gotta actually come down here like talk to them see how great some of the people in this area are actually learn their stories learn what they've gone through learn their experiences smoke cows hey how you doing thank you appreciate it exactly stacy you're totally right that's what i'm saying like any one of us could be most people think they're immune to being homeless right they kind of have this arrogant attitude. Okay, they are doing evictions. Okay, I'm going to go across the street. They're trying to evict people. That brown guy, that brown guy, that brown guy you see over there, he's actually in the Van Du video. He's one of the people that was accompanied by the cops and they were trying to evict people. So they're still trying to evict people. So I'm going to go across the street and film that. They're trying to evict. You see those tents across the street? They're trying to evict those tents. Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Smoky House Radio. If I'm not already subscribed to you, I'll subscribe to you. Appreciate the support. Thank you so much for, you know, anytime, any videos you watch, any time you spent with that, I sincerely appreciate that. You know, thanks for having compassion towards these causes. Oh, they're doing it by your place too, Keisha. I'm on East Tasting Street. Okay, again, I'm gonna kind of keep the phone facing downward a bit because most people are cool, but some people they may not know how public photography and all this works. So some people get hostile. But okay, so they're trying to—they're talking to this person. They're trying to evict them. I see absolutely no compassion. It seems like by these people, like where is that person supposed to go, right? They're trying to kick them off the street. Actually, we're not kicking them out. We're oh, it definitely seems that way. Okay, so he claims they're actually they're getting him his stuff back. They're not kicking him out. That's what is. That's what he claims. It doesn't matter whether, it's, whether someone's, well it shouldn't matter, but it does, apparently it does to some people, but whether homeless or not homeless, like income, all this stuff, like pretty much everyone is deserving of love, respect, dignity. I mean, they shouldn't be mistreated just because, you know, they might not have a home right now, they might have a... Like the unhoused people, they should be treated like human beings too, they shouldn't be dehumanized and just displaced over and over again. Okay, I'm surprised they're not accompanied by cops. Usually when they're doing these kind of we're evictions. Not. We're not. I'm actually. Su I've actually seen, have you seen the Vandu video? We should be accompanied by cops, like people like you yeah. harassing us. Are they, you call filming harassment? Oh, what What are you doing then? What are you doing to that person? You don't call that harassment? No, I'm actually See, this is, this, stuff. this is I'm what Karen's do. They're harassing homeless people and they're trying to say, I'm harassing them. I'm peacefully filming on a side, you know trying to hold them accountable. Do you know his name? Do you know his name? Do you know his you know name? This man's name? What does that matter? Oh, you know his name, wow. I have oh, a wow. relationship with him. Uh-huh. Who are you? <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Okay, get focus on your job. Focus on your job. Don't focus on me. To focus on your job. I'm going to focus on filming this peacefully. Again, a lot of Karens, they do this. They try to deflect, right? Again, they're, they're claiming, apparently filming peacefully is harassment, according to them. We're actually finding him housing oh, that's cool. and that's giving cool. him his things. Oh, that's interesting. Sorry. I'm sorry. This was our... Journal? 
Sorry? You're a journalist? Yeah, yeah. Independent yeah. journalist, yeah. For who? Huh? For who? Uh, independent who, who, who journalist. Who do you mostly sell, sell to? Sorry? Who do you mostly sell your... Uh, I give stories to the news sometimes, it depends on what I get, but yeah. like, I, yeah, I've had some stories featured on like CTV News, CB, CBC so, and all that, yeah, Rakesh, if, R-A-K, yes, like, if you want to look some of the stuff yeah. up, all right. yeah, man. But do you Pleasure. know what the Aboriginal front door is? Sorry? Do you know what the Aboriginal front door is? Uh, I believe I've seen that, where is that? Somewhere you in this area, right? It is. Uh, I'm not quite sure. don't know the neighborhood as well as you can. Uh. Okay, so there they go. And they're probably gonna, of course, they're gonna change their behavior now, likely now that they know they're being filmed. Like, well, like I said, just like, just like some of these bad cops, right? They're afraid of being held accountable. They see a camera and they immediately get hostile. Like, just focus on there, focus on what you're doing, right? They don't like what they're doing. They know what they're doing is wrong, right? So they don't want this being broadcast. They know it makes them look bad. Okay. That guy's giving me hostile side eye. That city worker. And of course, if I asked them for their name, of course they're not going to provide their name, right? Because they're scared of accountability. So they're not going to... And none of them have badges. Like, none of them has a gun. Like these guys actually seem cool, but none of them have name badges. And they should, right? They work for that. They're public workers, right? Their, their salaries are funded by the public, so they should be held. I mean, they should answer to the public, right? If we want to know what their name is, if we want to file a complaint or something against them, they should identify themselves. They should have identifying information on them, but they don't. None of them have name tags. None of them have any kind of identification number. And usually these guys are accompanied by cops, like not today. It's probably because of the, it's probably because of the Van Du video, like that got, that got a lot of views. So that's probably why they're not accompanied by cops today, but they typically they're accompanied by a gang of cops, like at least four or five cops. And Can I get your name? I'll give you my name if you give me your name. Harf. Mark? Harf? Harf. How's it going, man? Good. How come you guys don't... It's Rakesh. Rakesh. Yeah. How come you guys don't have any like name badges or anything? You work for the city, right? You're a public employee, right? Yeah. You guys are public employees. It's weird that you guys don't have any kind of identifying information. So... Are you filming without my consent? Do you not... It's public. It's public. You don't need consent. Okay, so this guy's name is Parv, apparently, P-A-R-V. So he's actually, he's saying you're, you're filming without my consent, even though it's public. Like, how can you not know that, right? How can you work for the city of Vancouver and not know that you can film anything in public, right? You don't need permission to film in public. Like... Okay, see, instead of focusing on their job, they're trying to get hostile towards me. Like, that dude approached me. And now that they're being filmed, they don't want they don't want to do their job now because their whole job pretty much is harassing homeless people, trying to evict homeless people, even though it's freezing. It's gonna snow again this weekend. I mean not this week. It's in the forecast, it's gonna snow, like it's getting colder and colder. And yet they're trying to evict people. Now that they're on camera, they're probably they're, they're not even gonna do it. Oh this guy's gonna film me. Okay, I don't care. Yeah, dude, my film. Okay, cool. We're gonna film each other. Let's just stand here and film each other. Want to do this for like the next hour? Dude, this is gonna be... This is interesting. He's filming me. I'm filming him. I like this. Cool. Yeah, we should play some kind of game too. Like, to kind of pass the time. Yeah, I'm so really birds craps on you. <laughs> oh, oh, that's real professional. He said he wants the birds to crap on me. Oh, that's real. Again, so much professionalism. Oh, you're so professional. Yes. Are you? Hey, how about What's your name badge? Huh? You call yourself a journalist? Name badge? <laughs> I don't need to have a badge. You work for the public. You answer to the public. You work for the city of Vancouver, so you answer to the public. 
your salary is funded by the public. Your your salary is funded by the public. Okay, cool. How long? Cool. Let's keep walking. Let's keep walking and recording. Aren't you supposed to be doing your job? Like, what are you getting paid for, right? Evicting well, homeless. You're harassing me. Evicting. You're not even giving me space to do my job. You're the one that's kind of recording. Like, you, you find that creepy? Why don't you, you call don't the? Find that creepy? If you call filming so and public come, harassment. Why come you your place to work and start filming <laughs> you? You're you in public. You're a public employee. Get that through your head. Like, learn how that works. You're a public employee on a public sidewalk. Anybody can film anything on a public sidewalk. Okay, cool. So you guys aren't gonna do your job now, I guess, right? What are you getting paid for? You're getting paid to film me? Is that what you're getting paid for? You gotta bear my rights, too. Oh, uh, nice. I don't care. That's cool. Yeah, Dude, Rakesh. Rakesh, Dad, look me up. Yeah, look up. Know. This is gonna be yeah. online. Oh, he's taking my picture, too. Okay. Look me up. I've got TikTok. I've got YouTube. I'm all over social don't media. Need to know anything about <laughs> oh, you're gonna be on there. So you should look it up. Check out that video. <laughs> look at this. No, yo, keep filming me, yeah? Keep filming me. I don't even mind. All three of you should get your phones out and film me. <laughs> Again, they're public employees. Like, they should... Why are public... It seems like public employees are the most hostile towards filming, right? Because they're some of the worst. They're some of the most corrupt. Okay, so what... Are, are they actually going to do anything? Like, if I wasn't filming, there would be... All the homeless people we've passed along this way, they would be trying to evict all those people, harassing those people, telling them to leave the place they call home to go where exactly? Where Are they going to go to a different street and then just get harassed all over again over there? There's no housing available. There's barely any shelter space right now. A lot of people find shelters unsafe. So where exactly are they supposed to go? At least if you're going to try and displace homeless people, at least have a place for them, right? At least offer them some kind of accommodation. Don't just kick them to the curb and say, you know, just get out of We don't care where you go. Just get out of here, right? Exactly. They don't care. I guess they're just going to run away. So many of these public employees, they'll just run away. Once the camera's on them, suddenly they don't want to do their jobs because they know what they're doing is wrong, right? Suddenly they're... They want to run away. They want to get away from the camera as quickly as possible. Exactly, they're public servants. I mean, that dude, he actually seems like he wants to get violent towards me. <laughs> that dude seems so hostile. Like, you can see it in his stance. Like, what the? And he stopped recording me. I told him, like, keep recording if you want. Like, I couldn't care less. Okay, so here they go, harassing another homeless person. John, it's the city of Vancouver. Are you around? And they're not wanted around here, right? They act like they're friends of like, like the homeless people actually look forward to seeing them. Like they're friends, like they're their friends. This is an, it's an intrusion. No matter how they try to portray it, they try to portray it like, oh, they know their names. They're friends with them. They're here to help them. But that's just ex an excuse. Most of the unhoused people, they're tired of being harassed, whether it's by city employees, whether it's by the cops. They just want to live in peace, right? They don't want to be intruded upon by people just trying to displace them, treat them like criminals, treat them as, try to criminalize homelessness, like what they're doing is wrong. We got another troll. Or yeah, you actually, that's actually in the story. There actually is kind of a conspiracy theory surrounding that. And MAID, if you guys don't know what MAID stands for, it's uh, medical assistance in dying. So a lot of people are actually choosing that. And apparently as of, as of March 2023, like mental health is going to be included in that. Like right now, it's just people with terminal illnesses and stuff. If somebody wants to choose that, there's a whole process that they have to go through. But apparently it's actually easier it's actually easier to apply for death than it, than it is to access like affordable housing in the city. It's easier to access death, made medical assistance and dying than it is to access mental health services and some community services in this city. Like that's how messed up. 
that's how messed up some things are around here. Just look it up if you guys want to do more research on that. There's actually been recent stories. There's a guy, I read a story. I'm kind of like paraphrasing here. You guys can look it up and look up the specifics if you want. But just, I don't know what the keywords would be. I guess disability made house homeless Vancouver. But there's actually people that are signing up for MAID because they're tired of waiting for housing. And, and like they're getting kicked out. They're staying in one of these rundown apartments in the downtown east side and they might be trying to raise the rent or they might be trying to evict them. So they don't, they can't afford a better place at the moment. So rather than be homeless, they're actually choosing to sign up for death. They're, they're choosing to sign up for medical assistance in dying rather than be homeless. So it's terrible what's happening. Like uh, some people, it, it's, <clears throat> it can take such a long time to access mental health care in this city too that again some people with mental right now it's not approved for mental health but it's gonna be starting next year so people with mental health issues that are having trouble getting help some of them are probably gonna choose choose MAID and they're gonna have an easier time being approved for MAID that again for mental health care so like, and this is Canada right this is Vancouver Canada it's one of the richest countries in the world I mean this isn't a developing country we shouldn't have these kind of issues here. So what are these guys, what are they doing exactly? They're just like doing a circuit. They're just doing like a circuit. And again, if I wasn't filming, then all along the street, every homeless person, they would have tried to evict them, harass them. But when they're on camera, now they're choosing to change their behavior. They don't want that stuff being caught on camera. Exactly, Lockin. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. It's happening all over the place. Another apparent troll. Hey, thank you so much, Ginger. I appreciate it. you doing it. You're doing an awesome job. Thank you for taking on modding duties. There are some trolls in here, so I appreciate you being in here. You add a lot to these lives. It's always enjoyable when you're in here. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for modding as well. I mean, it's not all Trudeau, right? This, these kind of issues, like this, the homelessness issue in the downtown east side, this has been going on long before I think Trudeau even took office, right? But it, like I said, it's just been neglected. It's the provincial government. It's just as much at fault as the federal government, probably more so, right? Because this is, this is a provincial matter, right? So the provincial, they've failed to act. There's been so much inaction. They know, they're aware. It's not like they're not aware of these issues. But they've just chosen not to act. They've chosen not to act on this fast enough. They've let it. They've let the issue grow worse and worse. And now it's at a point where there's thousands of people that are homeless. And now, just now, they're trying to kind of catch up. They're, they're trying to play catch up with building these affordable housing places. But it's not going to be fast enough, right? No matter how many, that's not the solution. <laughs> that's a that's probably part of the issue like what Keisha mentioned about Ukraine like it's terrible what's happening in Ukraine anytime like comes some kind of conflict a war breaks out in some country it's terrible but they've given so much money to Ukraine I think and other countries and like they could have spent that money like when you've got people dying when you've got homeless people freezing to death and like people dying in Canada like thousands of people staying on the street in Canada like how about you take care of your own citizens first before you start giving millions of dollars to other countries right 
And of course, like I said, it's terrible what's going on. Of course, if there's conflict going on in the country, you want to help out, but like you got to take care of your own citizens first in my opinion right like what's the difference between homeless people dying and people dying in those countries right it's all it's all tragic they can't get people free there are some people exactly that could have the money they sent to ukraine that probably could have i mean how many, how much housing could they how much affordable housing could they have built with that money they could have opened up new shelters. There's so much that could, there's so much that could have gone towards, right? They could have totally revitalized the downtown east side with that type of money. Like I, I'm not sure. I don't have the specifics, like how much money was sent to Ukraine, but it was like millions upon millions of dollars, I think. And again, I'm not. I'm not saying they don't deserve help or anything. It's a tragedy. Any anyone that dies anywhere, any war that breaks out, it's a terrible thing. But Help your own citizens first, right? Before sending money to other places. 40 billion, I don't know, is that true? Do you have like a source on that? That's messed up. So you are Brad. So it's awesome that you got help. It's awesome that you got out of that situation. But you're probably one of the few people that was actually helped by the government, right? So many people are going without help. Hey, would you mind going into detail about your situation? That's awesome. Congratulations again on, you know, Kind of recovering from that getting out of that situation you should be proud of yourself that's one of the most difficult things a person can do to be homeless or have addictions or mental health issues and to kind of get through that so that's awesome you're able to do that but would you mind sharing more details about that like what kind of help did you receive how long did it take you to get out of that situation it'd be nice to hear about that you, sh you should actually do videos on that probably that would be interesting to hear that would be interesting to see yeah, stories like that are inspiring, right? Anytime someone's able to get out of those kind of conditions and turn their life around, that's inspiring. <laughs> Yo, if they split up, which one? Which one should I continue filming? <laughs> Hey, thank you, Glenn, for thank you, Glenn, for following and sharing. You're awesome. I'll follow oh, you back. Good. Anybody that wants to follow, we'll follow you back. Check out Keisha's page if you haven't already. She's got some awesome content. Thank you so much for following. We'll follow all of you guys back. Please be patient. I've got like hundreds of people to follow back, so I'll get to you. Appreciate it. Okay, so they, that person was right. I think they actually are going to use the split up strategy. I think this guy's staying back and those two are going up ahead. Uh, this is on where my this is the intersection of May Street and Hastings Street. Okay, so this dude's putting on a show of like friendliness. <laughs> Again, these are the same people they try to evict even though they've got nowhere to go. Angie, thank you so much for following, appreciate it. Roadmut, thank you so much for the compliment. Okay, Nate, I don't see them I don't see them providing any kind of solution. Like where are they gonna if they're not staying here, where are they gonna go? This is another reason that there's a large concentration of homeless people in this area is because this is where all the resources are, right? If you there's free food here, there's cheap the inexpensive food here they got they got substance issue resources here they got safe injection sites so this is the whole hub right this is like the hub of the downtown east side you got community centers around here you got bathrooms around here 
a lot of people feel safe here. They kind of built the sort of, even the people staying on the street, you know, they've built a sort of community here. They feel safe here and other places they might not feel safe, right? And if they try to remove them from this area, they're going to be taken away from these resources, right? So, yeah, just terrible what they're doing. I mean, just leave them be. Like, how much, how much money is being wasted? How much funding is being wasted for these people wandering around harassing homeless people? Why not actually put this money towards helping the homeless people, right? Like, they're probably, I don't know how much these people get paid, but they're probably getting paid, like, what? I don't know. Let's say... Let's say on the low end, they're being paid like sixty, seventy thousand dollars, right? It's probably more than that. I mean, cops in this, most cops in the city make like a over six, over six figures, right? And they spend a lot of time just walking around, wasting funding. Same thing with these guys. Like, what exactly are they doing? Is this productive? Yeah, y'all can look up. You can probably Vancouver city workers. I guess you, you guys can look that up. The salaries, if you want. I don't know what the exact salaries are. Same thing with the police, you can look up their salaries as well. Apparently a starting, a cop starting out in Vancouver makes like seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 just to start out with. And after being on the job for like four years, it goes, it goes up to six figures. So way overpaid. They are, they are. Like I said, look it up and you can actually get... They're not going to reveal their names, obviously they don't want to be held accountable, but you can actually look up salaries, you can actually call the city of Vancouver 311 if you've got their name, or like with a cop, if you've got their badge number, you can actually get their name from the city of Vancouver, you can get salary information, do freedom of information requests, like all of this is public, they're public employees, so this is all public information. Ginger, you're awesome, thank you so much for being in here, appreciate it. How's your day been? Brad, I haven't been paying much attention to the screen, but what, how exactly did they help you? Like, what kind of help did you receive? <coughs> hey, beautiful dogs. <laughs> uh, this is East Tasting Street. I'm walking along East Tasting. And now, before, before I started filming, they were actually, they were in the middle of harassing a homeless person. They claimed they were helping the homeless person, but of course, that's what cops do too when they got when they get caught, they try to claim that they're helping people, but they're pretty much harassing. There's other videos of these people too, just harassing homeless folks, trying to evict them from here. So they were in the middle of apparently harassing the homeless people when I started filming. As soon as they see that they're being filmed, they just started walking around. Now all of a sudden, they're not doing anything. Thank you, Red Hat, for following. Appreciate it. We'll follow you back. So are they checking on people? Like some people are slumped over. Like in this neighborhood, you actually see a lot of people that are kind of like in a slumped over type of position. And obviously it would be probably too difficult to check up on all of them. But are they doing that? If they care so much about people, if they're here to help people, are they doing that? Are they checking to make sure people aren't ODing? Vancouver is actually a beautiful place, most of it anyways, this is, I mean, this is, a lot of this is due to government neglect. Awesome, that's good to hear, Ginger. Oh, that's actually one of the artists around here, he's a, uh, I'm gonna get him to plug his, he's actually been featured on the news and stuff, he does paintings, they're pretty popular, some of his stuff, some of his artwork has been featured like in the, in museums, on the news, so check him out if you guys want. He sells his artwork around here, he does some beautiful paintings. Say, and this has been this is not a new issue again government neglect right they spend more money oh there, there's actually cops across the street too i'm gonna check that out oh we got three cops i guess they're gonna start harassing people too so we got three cops across the street i'm gonna check that out all right i'm gonna check that out as well 
I see, it's like they can't catch a break, right? If they're not being, if the vulnerable people in this area, if they're not being harassed by city workers, then they're being harassed by cops. So we got three cops across the street. I'm going to check that out, see if they're... I'll come back to this later on if they're still here. If the city workers are still here, I'll come back to this. Like, of course, some of these government bootlickers, that's what their response is going to be. They're going to blame the, the people. Like, are the people supposed to... Are they in charge of funding? Are they in charge of how government is spending money? Where are they direct resources? Are they in charge of building affordable housing? No, they're not in charge of any of that. I mean, that's the, how, that's the responsibility of the city of Vancouver, the government. They weren't supposed to let this happen in the first place. There should be 